Uh, I have seen one of your videos, you building a Docker over, I believe, a 9K switch. Yep. So so we've got the ability to run containers on mm -hmm. um, all of the, the platforms these days. And there's different container technologies. So Docker is kind of the typical container technology that we think of mm -hmm. when we think of running containers. But there's also, um, there's actually the, the original Linux container technology is called LXC. And so we've got the ability to run different container options on different platforms. So on a Nexus 9000 with some of the most recent code releases, we've got full Docker support where you can run Docker containers right on a Nexus switch. Um, prior to the Docker support being directly there, we had uh, container support technologies building on the LXC technology. Um, iOS XE has the ability to run applications containerized on them as part of the what's called the IOX um, application stack that's been around for quite a while now inside of iOS XE, but it used to just kind of live inside of the IoT platforms. And now we're finding IOX has been kind of extended across the iOS XE platform. So you can run different applications and build, build containers and run them right at the edge um, on the platforms. For folks interested in the iOS XR, We've got similar technologies there as well, um, both for the Python interpreters that we talked about before, as well as mm -hmm. the ability to run apps right at the edge. And so we're, the goal is to kind of open up um, the network platform for developers to run business applications at the edge when, when it makes sense to gather telemetry data or process things at the edge. But even more than that, we're finding great use cases from network engineers to be able to run run code, build custom apps, do different types of network troubleshooting as part of kind of running applications right at the edge inside of the platforms. Okay, to, to clarify this, because as I mentioned to you earlier, there is, you know, mm -hmm. people even with like a professional skill or even expert skill, they're still confused. But myself, you know, I work on the UCS, I work on the Nexus. I'm certified on Nexus from 1K all the way to 9K. You know, Cisco, they keep us like update as, as I'm, I'm an employee to the, to the company. So but my understanding, this is if you run a Docker in the top of 9K switch, mm -hmm. so that would, would consider as kind of server uh, serverless application because it's run on the edge? Yeah, so, so serverless is, is one of those new kind of um, buzzwords in the application development space. Mm -hmm. um, so the way I describe serverless is serverless is, is a term about perspective. And so if you think about put yourself in the shoes of, a, of an application developer for a minute. Um, if, you, if you're working in a serverless framework, the idea is that all you're really working on is the actual application code. Um, maybe that's in Python, or maybe it's in Java, or Go, or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the only thing you're concerning yourself with is the actual script and code that's there. Mm -hmm. um, and then you are going to take your code and run it in some serverless platform. And so there, there are a variety of serverless platforms out there. Um, some of the early ones are, are things like AWS Lambda, which is a serverless yep. platform um, from that's available in AWS Cloud. I believe all of the major cloud providers have them, um, something similar. And then there's also solutions like OpenFAS. OpenFAS is, is an open source serverless platform that you can run on a variety of different types of clouds and, and pieces that are there. Um, what, what's important to recognize about serverless is all of the serverless technologies that are out there, they kind of they work in the same way. They take as an input the code from the developer. And so whatever language their code is, they take that code. And then the serverless platform does what I like to call automatic containerization. And typically in these cases, these are Docker containers. And so the developer gives the serverless platform their code. The serverless platform then takes the code, puts it inside of some sort of a container, and then runs that container whenever the, the code needs to be run, and then manages the startup and the teardown and, and the life cycle of those containers. Um, so it's serverless because the, mm -hmm. the developers don't have to do that themselves. Um, it's also kind of containerless because again, the developers don't have to worry about the containers, but under the hood, it's, it's still containers. And then obviously the container itself has to run someplace. And so that's gonna run on a server someplace as it goes. In the perspective of running containers on a switch at the edge, mm -hmm. um, most of the folks doing that today wouldn't do it in what I would term a serverless fashion today. 
because mm -hmm. the application developers are likely taking their code and then building the container themselves and then deploying the container to the edge. Um, this is more similar to something that you might call edge computing or, or even fog computing. computing or fog where you're, computing. you're pushing stuff out to the edge. But I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. call it serverless yet. We'll eventually see that serverless framework kind of pushed out to the edge where the developers can get back to just focusing just on their code. But in, in kind of the use cases today, primarily what we're, we are finding is that it's the developers build their code, they put it in a container, mm -hmm. and then they run that container on a, an edge device someplace. Yeah, I mean, from uh, as as a data center engineer, mm -hmm. you know, usually when you when the customer hit the data center is going, you know, from the internet all the way to the 9K switch to the 5K to the fiber interconnect all the way to the UCS blades, whether or rack mounted uh, servers. And you know, you have, uh, it could be OpenStack, it could be you having VMware, that one is application sets. But now we would like kind of deleting that path, we're going all the way just to the 9K. So it's, it's technically still like, as you mentioned, it's kind of like serverless, just sitting on the edge or, or, or like a computer, fog computer, uh, as it's called nowadays, you know, too many terminology, too many names nowadays. Yeah, I, from that perspective, I could see you calling it serverless, but, but the fact that we're running, when, you, when you're running the application code on the Edge device, in this case, let's say it's a Nexus 9000, mm -hmm. the Nexus 9000 in that case is, is acting like the server to, to provide the compute and memory and horsepower for it mm -hmm. um, as it goes through. And then the other one to keep in mind is, is when we talk about these Edge computing use cases, um, most of them are not data center style use cases um, because inside of a data center, we've got tons of compute, right, to run different resources on. So the efficiency is usually just run those inside of the areas. The, the edge compute use cases are more often leveraged where, where you actually um, are trying to run code kind of outside of the data center. And so let's say you've, you're mm -hmm. gathering, um, let's say you're, you're a manufacturing customer and you're gathering information about how well the machinery inside of your plant are going through. You, you may not want to deploy a ton of, of UCS or, or physical compute at that location to run those, but you have to, run, you have to deploy a network, right? All of those devices have to plug into a network someplace. And so you can run the, the, the monitoring or the telemetry or the, the analytics um, applications mm -hmm. necessary um, on the switches that you have to put there anyway. And so then the data that's c computed at the edge inside of those switches in your manufacturing plant might be um, kind of distilled down, processed, and then uploaded kind of the summary data or the batch information is then sent back to your data center for further for further analysis is, is one example on how that might go through. Um, the, the running of apps and containers in a data center on a Nexus switch, the use cases that typically pop up there are actually where the, the network focused um, apps and use cases come through. So things about like checking network health or processing network telemetry data where it makes sense to process it right at the edge of the, the devices or top of rack in a data center. Um, that's kind of where the, the, the container apps and the, the edge computing apps inside a data center makes sense. Is it's, mm -hmm. it's like business apps at that point because the business apps are probably just running on the data center compute pieces. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I totally you know, I understand because, you know, it's, it's my daily basis for years now. But, you know, I have a lot of public questions. Sure. Yeah, yeah I'm happy to. Those is public questions I... Sometimes we, we come into confusing part. They say, oh, this information maybe is not right, maybe not. I said, you know what, hopefully I will be lucky to get Mr. Hank on the meeting <laughs> and open all those two guys. And, you know, I, I love, you know, joining the community and, and uh, you know, introducing myself and helping people finding their, their best path, whether here in the United States or, you know, outside the United States. 